let's now talk about transactions. One of the use cases is to actually print out the transactions. We never wrote this as a conceptual class. The reason being transactions are actually the borrows of books, or returning of books or placing of holes, which are really relationships between the book and member classes. And we represented those as conceptual classes in the conceptual class diagram. So the essential information about transactions is actually there in that conceptual class diagram. We are just um, asking that to be printed, asking those um, transactions to be printed in that use case. And we never really talked about it as a physical class either, but we do that now. At the outset, we didn't um, realize perhaps that there was a class needed, but now we are discovering as we are looking at how to implement the printing of transactions. So let's think about it. We need to store information about book issuers, returns, placing of holes, etc. So like issue, return, placing, and removing hold, et cetera. And let's say that we our um, goals are fairly minimal. All we need to know is what did a member do on a certain date? So we are not talking about all members. We are not talking about all dates. What did one member do on a certain date? Did they get books issued? Did they return books? Did they place any hold? Did they remove any hold? Those are the only things we need to have. So as books are issued and returned and holds are placed and removed, we need to log that information. So we could conveniently do that using a class called a transaction. And let's see what we need to have in such a class and where we should store the transactions. Well, obviously we need the type of the transaction. For every transaction, we need to know what was involved in that transaction. The second thing is which book was involved. The third thing is what was the date on which the transaction occurred. And the fourth thing is, which member was involved in the transaction? Okay, now we are asking for display of transactions for a member on a certain date. So we never ask for transactions for multiple members in one request. So what we could do is very conveniently store all the transactions for a member in the member class itself. So we could have a collection in the member class that stores all the transaction objects. And let's say that uh, the user interface would decide uh, the format of the display because ultimately what kind of uh, interface you have would be a serious factor in the display, right? So let's assume that there is a method called get transactions in the library class that would return all the transactions, maybe an iterator. So let's look at uh, this uh, sequence uh, diagram. Sorry about that. Um, the clerk issues the 
request to get the transactions and the interface asks for the member ID and date. Remember, we are printing the transactions for one member, a specific member on a specific date. So both have to be input. And we decided that there is going to be a method called get transactions and in the library class that has to take the member ID and the date. As usual, we need to make sure that there is a member involved and we have to get the member object because we decided the member object will maintain all the transactions for the member. So we asked the member object to get all the transactions for that particular date. The member has already been decided, so we don't have to have any member ID or anything passed because we have decided who the member is. And we are going to get an iterator back and we will be passing that iterator to the interface which displays it in whatever way it wants. 